Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Welcome and good evening to you at home. Uh, we've got Paul this evening and uh, he's going to do a cafe scene in a critic. I'll leave you, Paul, to tell him all about it. Thank you. Paul? Lovely. Thank you very much. Hello. Hi. Um, today, a uh, cafe scene, as Chris said, in acrylic. Um, I'm going to be using mainly palette knives. I'm going to work on this board here that I've, well, it's canvas, that I've prepared already. Um, it's dioxium purple on the ground, and I have put a lot of texture gel on here. In fact, it is actually a previous picture that was up that way um, of, of, of a cathedral. Um, so it's got a little bit of texture already in there. It's nice to work on an, another picture because you get a lot of stuff of interest still coming through, a few marks and things coming through. What I've done is I've mapped out what I'm going to paint on here. I don't normally do that, though. I normally just go straight in and it kind of metamorphosis is, um, if that's a technical word. Um, but what I've done is I've been playing around to make sure I've got the thirds working. Um, so I've put the, window, the principal windows in, the doorway in, the ground in. So I'm going to do a very flat-on picture of, um, of a cafe. It's a very small cafe um, that actually serves through a hatch um, that we saw in, in Italy. Um, so I shall, I shall do that. What I was saying is that I will probably try and stop after about an hour um, when I've done the underpainting to make sure the surface is dry because I then want to come back and put the figures and the detail on, on to um, dry. I'm going to work wet over wet for an hour and then I shall work um, hopefully wet over dry um, otherwise it all starts to pull about. So um, a few things about the acrylics first of all. I don't know if any of you use acrylics, those of you that do use acrylics. Um, I use a palette, I use a Tupperware lid as a palette which is really nice because it's flexible and you can peel off the the dried acrylic that you've not used which gives you this kind of thing um, it gives you what's called a skin so you can take it off the palette and when you turn it over you've no idea what you're going to get underneath um, if you've got a palette like mine um, so there's one side of it and there's the other and of course, you can stick it back on. Those of you that do abstracts, you can use it to st stick, out, stick on and use it as, a, as an additional texture. It's, it's great. It's well worth saving. You can't do that off a china palette or a paper palette as easily as you can off a, um, a Perspex one, a, a Tupperware one. Um, I've got a variety of paints that I'm going to use today. What I tend to do is use the cheaper ones first for the big body areas and gradually as I get into more and more detail I'll use more and more expensive paints. The pigments are brighter um, and they actually add to the, the, the highlights and the, and the, the, the sense of texture and, and, and colour. Um, so the blocking in I'll do with the cheaper paints first. Um, those of you that know about um, acrylics, this I mentioned texture gel. I've got this gel here which is glass beads. Um, I've also on, on here, and I'm also using um, lava gel, which is a, a black gel. Sorry, you can't really see that in colour. If I hold it up, you can see um, that it's got black lava in it as opposed to um, the clear glass. Both of the are set, are set in white pigment. Um, that white is the acrylic paste, and that will actually dry, dry clear. And people ask me why they can't mix um, acrylics truly the second day. So when it's dry on the, on the, on the board, you try and mix it again and colour match it, and you can't. It always ends up a different colour. And the reason is that all of the paints have got acrylic paste. They've all got an acrylic binder in them. That acrylic binder's white, but it dries clear. So your paints will look lighter on the palette when they're wet than they will when they're dry. So you'll never match them. Um, which is why stay wet palettes are useful. Um, the other way to do it is what I'm going to do tonight, and I'll talk to you about as I do it, um, is to remember what your recipes are. And if you remember what your recipes are to put on the board, then you can mix it again another day, another week, another month away, because you can come back and match it without having to try to match it. It's not a problem with oil paints, not a problem with watercolours, it's purely acrylic, so I've got that, that issue with the binder. Um, so that's enough of the blurb. Um, I'm going to start here with a building and another building here. <clears throat> and I'm going to try to 
get that sense of the sunshine in Italy. <coughs> it's always a good idea whenever you're painting to think about which way the sun's coming. I tend to, I don't know whether it's because I'm left-handed, but I tend to think of the sun coming this way. So for the purpose of the painting, the sun's going to be coming in this way, so all my shadows are going to be thrown to the, to the right-hand side. That's just the way I tend to, I tend to work. Um, so I'll put some orange on here to start with, and I'll do the other one in ochre. So my two body paints are going to be ochre and um, cadmium orange. I'm going to start with a relatively small brush. It's an inch, this one. Yeah, I'll start with an inch brush. I was wondering about two inches, but I think, I think an inch will do. Um, so just get a nice fat brush full of paint. Now you can see the beauty already of putting this on here. You can see immediately the texture gel is, is starting to enliven the picture. Um, what I'm hoping that will do is when I come into Scumble a little bit later, it's going to enable me to get some really effective um, sense of stucco and peeling, peeling plaster. Um, you can see why I was talking about stopping after an hour to try and dry it off, because I've already got it a little bit thick. Sorry, can you say again? Yeah, um, two things. I, I like working from dark to light. Um, I find it much easier to go up to the highlights rather than down to the, the darker areas. And so what this has done, with this here, immediately, I've got a window. Oh, well, I think I've got a window. I'm starting to think I've got a window already. I haven't got to worry too much. I'm going to put the wall in here. Um, and I've started to define a window frame. What I will do... Um, is start to clean off the brush in other various areas. And you start to clean it off in places like this, you'll start to build up a little bit more sense of the environment as you, as you go. Um, but I do it in the dark, because these doors and windows and the shadow underneath the canopy is already built for me. I haven't got to mess about with it. Um, and I hate white canvas. You know, it's just a, a, a preference. Um, and you've either got to start with a, white, a light background or a dark background, so starting with a dark one. Is, is for me nice, and it, all, it automatically makes the colours start to uh, start to sing. Um, I've, I've got lots of orange on the brush. I'm just going to pick up the ochre with that and put the ochre on this side. Um, same effect, really. There, just wipe it down. To be honest, Chris, it's, it's a lazy way of painting because I've nearly finished. <laughs> I, don't, I don't believe in too much detail, so I'm not going to overly worry about this. But that will, that will do for the time being. I'll have another oak building in here. What I'll try to do as well with the colours is try to get a, a sense of um, a vignette coming in, so I'll end up with some darker areas around to give it a bit more of a focal point. What I'm going to do now is a second layer, and what I will do with the second layer is, is to mix in white. You know, I don't know those of, you, those of you that do a lot of painting, especially if you do impressionist painting, you just find that it eats white. You can't have too much white in your, in your studio. Um, I'm always waking up in the morning thinking, oh, I haven't got enough white. Um, right, I mentioned colour recipes. What I'm going to do, um, I'm going to put another layer over each one of these. Um, I know that that's 100% cadmium orange. What I'm going to do is cut it and put as much white into it as I've got cadmium. So I've got now a 50-50 mix, more or less. 
So I've got a 50-50 mix. I've rough, I've rough mixed it. Um, still got a few streaks in it. You can still see a few bits of streak on the palette knife. It doesn't really matter. But what I'm going to do is just come on here with that. And basically, as my wife said, it's like plastering. What the texture gel has done is, as I was mentioning earlier, we we'll start looking at the scumbling. Um, it started to give me some scumble on there, and it started to give me a few smoother areas as well. So I've got a nice contrast between some aging bits of some aging bits of wall and some younger bits of better maintained wall. Gonna have a little bit more of the light coming down this side on that wall. There. A bit more paint on that one. I'll start redrawing. There's um there's a, shell, there's a small piece of shelving and some wood that goes across the top of this cafe. So I've started to redraw that with the, with the blade of the palette knife just to keep it, just to keep it going. Um, let's have a look at this. I want to get some under the window. A little bit more wall here. Okay. So um, that's coming on. I'm going to do exactly the same with the... Um, Ochre. I'm going to mix 50-50 white and ochre together. It's a bit of orange in there as well. Doesn't matter. It just adds a little bit of life to it. Come on. I don't know how many of you talk, talk to your tools. Do you like you give them encouragement like I just did then? It's quite important to have a dialogue with them, make sure they're working in the right way. I'd realised I'd lost this window here, so I'll just cut it back out again. And the nice thing about the dark background is you can cut back into the coloured paint and, and re, redraw. So, um, you can see the structure of the buildings now. You can see where the windows are coming, I hope. Um, what I'll do now is I'll come back in with the white again, and I'll take the white back into this 50-50 mix and make it a 25-75 mix to white. Okay, so if I add the same amount of white back in there again, it's now become a paler mix again. It's now a 75 25, so I've got 100% cadmium, 50-50 white and cadmium, and now it's 25% cadmium, 75% white. So I go over the top again. Normally, when I'm working at home, um, each one of these layers has a cup of coffee in between, but um, it just so it gives it a little bit of chance to just, just harden off on the crust. Um, it's not going to, so it's going to pick up a bit, but um, we'll go in anyway.
So I've predominantly got the, the, the 75 to 25 on the top, but you can still see the 50-50 and the, and the 70, and you can still see some of the purple where it's coming through underneath, um, which just makes it, I think, into a much more interesting texture. And I'll do exactly the same with the ochre. I'll take what's left of that white and stick it into a 25% mix. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm laughing. Um, yeah, it's, it's a standing... Um, yeah, yeah, yes, I do. Uh, when, I, when, I, when I'm doing uh, um, East Anglian pictures, I'm, I'm using um, sort of muddy grey and a bluey grey and a, another muddy sort of browny colour um, and, and sometimes an olive green if I'm really feeling like pushing the boat out. That's being very unkind and disingenuous. But no, I do, I do, I do find I was painting Suffolk pictures and um, I was making the, the roofs this colour and it, it does, it's not a gala really. Um, I quite like doing boats for that reason because they've got a little bit of life in them. Um, but I mean, I think I, mean, I, I, I do like people like Seago, uh, you know, that kind of work, but it's quite muted. It's not it's not got this sort of colour in there. But then he's making the colours out of the juxtaposition of a, of a, of a pale, mauvey, cold mauve next to a bright ochre or a, a, bright, a bright russet red. So it's different. You know. What I like less about painting in England is you haven't got the cafe culture. Um, so uh, I find it much easier to, to study the cafes when I've got a couple of glasses of white wine in me. Um. Right. I need a bit more white. The problem with using the white from the pot is that when I stick the palette knife in it, it turns it another colour. I don't, I don't normally like, although it's much cheaper to buy from a, use a pot, it's, um, my working methods don't really lend themselves to it. I'm too messy. Okay. Um. Right, what I'm going to do is add a little bit of structure now. I need a bit more white to do that. Um, I'll start to start thinking about putting in some of the uh, preliminary bits of the painting. Um, so I've just put the white, I've just muddied it down with a little bit of ochre, so it's predominantly white, but it's not a glaring, a glaring white. I've taken the... I've killed it off a bit. I'm just going to clean the palette knife. I need a clean knife for this. Um, I've spread the paint thinly on the palette, and the nice thing about big Tupperware is that it's flat. If I could just lay the palette in it, whoop, lay the knife in it, there we go, I can just pick up a, a bead on the blade, which then enables me to um, start to think about putting in some of, the, some of the lines of the window. I'm only doing a rough approximation at the moment. I shall worry about it a little bit more later, but I don't want to lose sight of what I'm trying to achieve. There's a window sill in there. Oops. And those of you that have heard me talk about this before will probably remember so apologies for that just seeing that piece of paint that went flying up in the air I don't know if anyone else did um, I was doing a demonstration somewhere else it remained nameless and I had a huge piece of white on the end of my palette knife and I went like that and it disappeared and, and I looked around everywhere and I couldn't find it and it was on the lap of a gentleman in the front row um, I didn't say anything and he didn't say anything. <laughs> I felt guilty about it ever since <laughs> oh dear
just going to use some of this white with the cream in it to just start messing about a little bit with the windows. And um, a bit of flooring here, so I'll stop again to tidy up a little bit. Okay. Um, now I need to address the darker parts of it now, so I'm going to come back and get some dark violet. some dark violet here and I'm just going to put that on neat with a clean knife I'll just put that on because I want to start to build out this this door frame a little bit here I mentioned the fact that I was going to try and build in a bit of a vignette to this. So I've just added a bit of purple in the corners there to give us a bit more of an entry. And we'll sort out the top a little bit later. Um, I'm just going to put some purple back into the windows just to give them a little bit more colour. Generally, I should have more reflections on the upper windows than the, the lower ones. Um, I'd expect to see more sky looking up. I'd expect to see more sky looking up to the upper windows because you get the reflection coming in at 45 degrees. As you're looking at the downstairs ones, you tend to get the reflection of what's across the road because um, you're looking straight. You're looking straight in, so you're looking at eye level straight into the window. So you either see what's inside or what's behind you. Whereas here, you're looking at 45 degrees, so you you would expect these to be lit more um, than than they currently are and I need to readdress this one because I knocked it back so if I just do that that gives me a little bit more window just run that dark down there the dark of another doorway okay right it's uh, looking a bit better I'll get some of this purple, I'm now going to cut it with the with the knife and put some shadow lines along here because I said there was some board that I wanted to have showing. So I'll build that line up here a little bit. back and work on that with some lighter bits in a moment. The dark under the window sill. <coughs> Excuse me. And a little bit of dark under this one.
and I've still got that bottom window to, to model in terms of a frame. And I might come in with a a slightly darker white. I'm going to carry a little bit of that orange across into here. Um, for no other reason than I felt it needed it. Um, so that looks a bit better. Okay. And a little bit of brightness down here for that mullion. I'm now just putting the whites down on the left hand side of each one of these just so that we get a little bit more sense of light coming across the picture. And I'll do the same at the top here. Sill, um, I'll do the sill in a slightly darker ochre. And bring some more white in for the mullion. Oh, yeah. right, a bit more ochre down here. Um, I've just got that beam to go across there. I'll put that in now. Um, that will change the tone of the picture quite a bit when I put that in. We're going to use white with a bit of ochre in it. Not much ochre, but just a little. I'm going to get a sense of a a board running across <coughs> that the plaster's sitting down on. It has unfortunately picked up a little bit of the wet purple that I had on there before, but 
Um, and you can see it on the back of the pallet knife. Uh, if, I'd, if I'd gone for that tea break, cup of coffee, every, every 20 minutes that I normally do, it would have been dry. It's much easier to do this a little bit drier. I think it gives a bit more of a sense of the structure of the building and it ties the three buildings together more as well. It gives you a little bit more sense of feel about what's, what's actually happening in the place. I can make that... Oh. I was going to make that a little bit lighter and not add purple to it. Um, put a little bit more light in there. That's better. Okay. This is now almost, oh, I would say, 80% 80, 80 white, probably more going on over the top, just to give it a little bit more of a, a highlight. I'm not too worried about that. I'm going to take that back. Well, as you can see how thick it is now, I'm cutting back into it. Um, I want to get some of that back off. Right. So that's about an hour. I believe I actually can't we can it can't be right. It must be about forty five minutes. Um, are there any questions at this point? about anything that I've done. Yeah. Um, no, I, I tend to use when I'm doing this kind of thing, I'm just doing one in the studio at the moment of um, uh, Manning Tree and I used a, um, a burnt umber, um, but I was using oil, I'm using oil paints for that, so it was more of a, a wash of burnt umber rather than a, um, a, a, a solid colour of burnt umber, but it was a burnt umber wash, first of all. Um, I often use um, Venetian red as well, Ven I like Venetian red um, for English scenes, it works very, very well. Um, but. Uh, uh, but then you have to work back into the dark as well. Um, so. uh, no, because it's a wash. Um, it's, going, it's going on as a, as a wash. I haven't even got any with me, I'm afraid. Um, but what I, what I did with the, with the oil paint is you put it on and then you rag it off. So you, on a white, it's on a white ground before that. So um, in premature, you're putting on is a, um, an, an umber and then just wash it and running it back. So it's quite pale. Yes, um, your, your style is so varied. <laughs> I mean, the lovely um, thing with the gutter at the table is it's not, you haven't used uh, paste underneath on that, have you? The one on the right hand side? Yes. No, actually, I, if I go and get that, I'll show the camera. That one? Yeah. yeah. What? Um, what I've done here, um, these two are in a painting this size. Um, in the original, they're in a painting this size, but they're about that big. And I just decided to blow them up and just faithfully paint the marks. So that's the blown up painting of a couple of incidental people that were in the corner of a picture, which is why they're painted like that. Um, so, um, no, that's all oils. That's oil paint with a brush. Yeah. Um, but uh, I was trying to get this sense of yeah. mark making yeah. um, in a different medium, yeah. um, in a different way, but trying to follow the colour scheme and the, the way the light had yeah, worked. I love, I love the sort of faceless oh. look to the 
Uh, that's what I'm going to do next. <laughs> so um, that's, that's part two. Um, as I was saying, it's, it's nice. It works better if it's dry. Um, some of this is, is dry here, dry, dry, dry-ish. Um, so I can, I can have a go at that. Um, are there any other, any other questions at all about what we've done so far? No? In that case, I'll just clean my brushes um, and have a... Um, have a go at part two. I've got here some waiters. Um, they're all various waiters who uh, I've drawn previously in my sketchbook and I, drew, I knocked them up today as a pattern because what I'm going to have is a waiter sitting on this side and some people just sitting over there. He's having a cigarette and not serving the customers which is generally what you'd expect. Um, and uh, I'll paint him over here and some people over here and uh, I've got the shutters to put on and some more light on the, the windows and things. The, the drier it will be, the better, um, but that's what I'm intending to do. I think I know which figure I'm going to do as well. Um, but I'll just clean my brushes and my palette and then we can make a start on the second half. I'm going to have a slight change of palette in that I'm going to stay with the violet for the shadows. Um, what I've got here um, is a burnt sienna. Um, it's quite a watery burnt sienna. Um, watery, sorry. It's quite a... It's Winsor & Newton Galleria, so it's not massively pigmented. Um, so when I put it on, it's quite, it's quite translucent. In fact, you may not even see it when I put it on. It's so translucent. Um, but it's, it's very good as a ground for the, for the basis of the figures. And I use it as a drawing tool um, to actually draw the figure in it first and then paint over the top. Um, what I'll use to paint over the top is um, pale terracotta, which generally is quite a, a nice flesh tone. It's a fairly middle range flesh tone. Pale terracotta. What range is that? Um, that's Galleria again. They do, um, they do terracotta and pale terracotta. And terracotta is probably twice as dark. Um, this is like terracotta with 50% white. Um, I used to use terracotta with 50% white and I thought, what's the point? I might as well buy pale terracotta. Um, so you can get the same effect by putting about a 50-50 mix of terracotta and, and white. gives you pale terracotta. I just buy it because I use so much of it now. It's just easier. Um, and then I'm going to use um, a Liquitex heavy-bodied light portrait pink. And you can see the difference in those tones before I've added white to them. Um, so those are, the, those are basically my flesh tones. Um, and then it's just a case of what people are wearing. Um, generally, my preference is to have a reasonable amount of white in there. So I'm going to put some white on the, on the palette as well. And hopefully those will be predominantly what I'm going to put the figures in. Um, with, with one notab notable exception, I'm going to introduce some red at some point for the waiter's um, smock. Did you say what was it? Pale portrait pink? 
Um, it's Pale Portrait Pink um, by Liquitex. Um, and it's a much stronger pigment. Um, and as you can see, it's a much brighter pigment. Um, and I'll, go, I'll use that just for the highlights. I'm then going to use um, one of my brushes. Um, it's a quarter inch brush. And it's solid. Um, it literally, literally the, about a millimetre of hair moves in it. It's really just a, a glorified palette knife, to be perfectly honest. Um, I, I find all my brushes go like that, so I might as well use them as not. No, I, joking aside, I just use it as a, as a small palette knife. I use them generally as a small palette knife. Um, most of the brushes I've got are in the same, are in the same vein. Um, Ones like, ones like this I can't cope with, they're too soft, <laughs> they're too soft and pliable. Um, so we're going to use this basically as the, um, as the tool for putting in the figures and I'm going to build some tables and chairs with, uh, with the palette knife. Um, what I've got here is a doorway, the, the bottom of the, the building is running along here, so this is pavement and then road. So I've got cafe tables sitting on the pavement here um, and that brush actually represents about the size of the doorway which means that a person standing is going to be about, because this is quite a small cafe, it's not a big cafe, um, is going to be about that high. So my person, my waiter who I want to have, this one here, this chap sitting on a high bar stool with a high table next to him, um, he's going to be more or less this, this high. So he's going to be a fairly a fairly big figure. I'm going to sit him here, this side of the doorway, with, a, with a, um, a high table. And then over here I'm going to have some low tables and chairs and some people sitting. I think I'll put them here because that's a bit wet to paint over, so I'll put, I'll put them just there um, on some low, some low tables. So first of all, having determined that's what I'm going to do, and getting the scale at this point is quite, is quite useful. Um, it's a good idea to make sure that if you've got a doorway, your people will fit through it. Um, um, that they don't have to limbo to get in, and conversely, they, they can reach the door handle. So um, both, both of those things are fairly, <laughs> fairly useful things to have, to bear in mind. Um, so I'll do the, the tables first. I'm going to use the knife for that. And I want to have a clean knife. And I want to just cut myself a bead. cut myself a bead and then just put in the tabletops. Another tabletop here. Another one here. Right, three tabletops running along the pavement. Um, Have some chairs in there as well. And uh, my high stool for the waiter, the high table here for the waiter. And for the moment, I've just knocked in some chairs there. Um, I'll populate them now. Um, the uh, couple of people I'll have sitting on that side. So I'm going to use the, this old brush with a bit of the, um, but the burnt sienna on it, and uh, I'll just block them. I'll just block them in.
and uh, down onto the pavement a bit lower. Okay. And the waiter over here. Um, He's going to be sitting on the stool, one leg on the ground, one leg on the stool, and uh, okay, I've more or less got him done. He's a bit tall. If, if this was all dry, I'd just wipe him off with a, with a cloth. I'll try and do that. Yeah. Put him back in again. Right, I'll shape him up in a minute. I'll tidy that up in a second. But it just gives me a rough idea of where things are going to be. And I'll put a little bit more detail on in a second or two. So having just knocked them back in, um, in the darker brown, I'll come back into the flesh the flesh tints I said the light was coming this way so to com complete that I'm going to use the um, pale terracotta and just start to to build up some of the features in pale terracotta but really where the where the sun would be falling rather than necessarily the whole figure. Waiter's going to have a white shirt on, <coughs> which will really help to get him defined. Again, with that quarter inch dry brush, we'll just start to build up some of his shirt. And the uh, person on the, the left here will also have a, a white shirt. That just makes life a little bit easier. Because I've got a lot of white left on the palette, you see, that's the main reason. <laughs> need to come back into shadow more. Let's build some of that back in. need to put some more flesh on the face because they're looking a bit scrabbly at the moment so start to build up a little bit more paint for the hands and faces and still using that pale terracotta 
Um, but I'm now going to just put on some... I'll use a smaller brush. I've got a, another smaller brush here. I'm just going to pick up some of that pink that I mentioned and just put some highlights on some of the parts of the body that would catch the catch the sun. Quite sparingly because I don't want loads of it. Otherwise it overloads the <coughs> um, overloads the other colour. I will now do something about this person on the this one here who's a little bit ill-defined at the moment and I'm going to step right out of the colour palette and I'm going to use cold blue I'm going to use cerulean if I can get it out of the tube Ooh. I'm going to use a cerulean blue I'm going to use it blue because it's cold it's a cold blue um, and also because I'm going to use it on the shutters up, up the top, so I'm going to have cerulean blue shutters and I'm going to have cerulean blue um, clothes, so you should get a three-point reference of, of, of blue. That's the, the plan. Um, <coughs> but again, it doesn't need a lot because we're just talking about where the sun catches the clothes. It doesn't need to have to be a lot of marks in cerulean blue. Um, there's a temptation always to put more on, um, but that will probably do just for the moment. Um, I'll come back and do the shutters now I've got the blue out. Um, I'm going to cut again with the palette knife. And then I'm just going to work the shutters down with a knife. Oops, come on. Right, what I'm going to do now is that cerulean blue <coughs> is mix it with 50% white and do it again. What I'm hoping is that I'll get a sense of both of fading paint and highlight coming through. Again, I've put the paler colour on the left-hand side in each case to just help me with that sense of sunlight. Whoops. 
That won't do the floor any good, will it? Sky, wasn't I? Right. I'm going to come back with a very small brush. Sorry, I'm just going to get the blue off the floor before I go any further. <laughs> <laughs> we were saying before we started, I seem to have more accents with cerulean blue and it stains, so it's a really good idea to move it quickly. Um, I'm going to come back with the, uh, the small brush <coughs> excuse me, and some clean white and just pick up some more white highlights on him, her, that person, and on the way to here. In need of a something to drink, the, the waiter, I mean, not me. Same with these people here, give them something to think about. <coughs> and in the window here, um, there's definitely some crockery piled up. Well, I've got that dark brown. I'll just put a line in here for a doorstep. And uh, a bit more shadow in here to get there. Right. I tend not to use much black, but I'm just going to put a touch of black in here just to add a little bit more drama to the lighting. And also because I think the waiter's head just needs it. And I'll give him a tie. And the same with these people here, just a little bit of dark in here, just to really push it back a bit.
I just feel it needs something else. I just want to put some more glasses on the table here. It's always nice to have something going on inside. So I'm just going to... Just take some brown and just... Put something in there that may be a personal, it may just be a mark. Um, that's just about it for me. Um, I think I've come a little bit early. Um, are there any questions, first of all? Anything you want to ask me or you want me to explain or recover? One thing that's always nice, I always stick a tape around it so that um, it leaves a border, which is quite nice. Somebody called this the Great Reveal. Um, I can't remember who that was, but uh, it's quite a... It's quite a, Those of you that ask me about the fact that I put white, I have white strips around my pictures, this is how it's done. Um, you have to be careful when you're taking it off if you use the acrylic as thick as this because being a plastic it sets over the masking tape and if you peel the masking tape off it can often lift the acrylic when the acrylic's dry that is it can lift the acrylic when it's dry it's not a problem here because it's soaking wet but um, if you've got a quarter of an inch of acrylic which is what I've got up here um, yeah, you can see it's really quite, quite thick um, if you've got that much acrylic, it, it will just peel off. But you can uh, you can see that I'm not sure my leg is going to hold up. That leg's going on your easel, <laughs> um, but that's kind of we were talking about this trench framing before it works quite uh, works quite well with the white border it's going isn't it it's going it lasted long enough to um, to pack up are there any any other questions is there any questions from the audience the other and the online people is there anyone online oh What a shame. Um, she's the only person that was um, that was questions, yeah. There we go. Let's put it back up. Yeah. I didn't put the weight as red. Um, no, they used to. Um, I used to name them, but um, I'd have people come in and go, I really love that. That reminds me of my... Uh, that, that reminds me of a, um, a cafe next to the house in Italy that we've got. Where is it? And I'd say, oh, it's Provence. And they'd go, oh, I don't want it then. So, so I've stopped naming them. <laughs> I've stopped telling...